The 9-11 attacks were executed in a hugely complex criminal enterprise with motive and opportunity to employ multiple weapons through a racketeering influence and corrupt organization that is still in existence. The RICO enterprise operates a cooperative front organization with audit tax and advisory access to untapped resources where multiple corporations and government agencies serve as unwitting or extorted clients. The criminal enterprise utilized an outstandingly brazen opportunity never before used in a crime. The coordinated acts of sabotage during a scheduled 30-hour stand-down of American military forces during an annual Canadian and American Air War game from 3 p.m. Monday, September the 10th to 9 p.m. September 11th, 2001. The Cooperative Front Organization operates out of the Swiss canton of Zug and Chicago, Illinois, New York City, New York, and Washington, D.C. The same 9-11 locations where dirty money was moved into hijacker accounts, stock markets were shut down or jammed open for insider trading, and pre-insured buildings fell, in not all cases hit by flying weapons. One of the front organization clients, the Montreal-based global engineering construction and sabotage testing company Amec, was operating construction contracts on 9-11 in New York's World Trade Center No. 7, in Chicago in the United Bank Swiss Tower, with Countrywide Mortgage Lender as a tenant, just across from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, as well as in Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Naval Command Center in Wedge 1 of the Pentagon. AMEC is conspicuously involved in the day in all locations, including the electronic trading floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Insiders of AMEC, a client of the front organization, and the alleged RICO enterprise therefore had an opportunity to profit from the contrived panic of the capital markets by derivative trading through the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Using a timeline analysis, we can expose 9-11 for what it was, a diversionary operation to camouflage mass murder for hire and insurance frauds in a virtual killing field. On 9-11, the front organization agents utilized a sophisticated type of mob-based loan sharking technique to confuse or intimidate our leaders. The front organization spin and spoilation team succeeded in keeping us focused away from complicit financial insiders and their strategic targets. It specifically laid down a zigzag trail of evidence for investigators to follow, thereby insulating the mens rea, the guilty minds, from events, places, people, agencies, business participants, and above all, the thousands of innocent victims thereafter associated with an Al-Qaeda-sponsored 911. The main weapon before, during, and after 911 can be shown to be a mind-numbingly complicated derivative-based tax shelter called Son of Boss, the bond option sales strategy, where companies are extorted after bonds of distressed debtors are bought pennies on the dollar by a Zug-registered cooperative group of hedge funds operating in reality as a racketeering influence and corrupt organization called KPMG. Instead of examining motive, opportunity, and weapon, the Hawks Cafe forensic method is to identify first the weapon, then its opportunity for use, which easily reveals the motive. Identifying the weapon first prevents us from being lost in assigning motives to those people we might like to think of as being singularly guilty by their participation on 9-11. The methods of acting out the crime have been defined in Part 1, the pattern of the crimes. The many signs used to divert or zigzag public perception and assignment of guilt has been presented in Part 2, the pattern of the signs. Here in Part 3, the pattern of the times. We will explain fully the timing of 9-11 and the motive, opportunity, and weapon of the criminal enterprise performed by agents of KPMG on its victims and clients, including individuals such as CO2E.com founder Carlton Bartels in World Trade Tower 1, and government agency clients such as, incredible as it sounds, the United States Department of Justice. Because of the tireless research performed by our nearly 900 forensics economists, we can now perform the requisite history matching to correlate events and purpose to the criminal activity showing motive and opportunity. The planning for 9-11 took years of coordination, such as massive reinsurance and catastrophe bonds issued for double occurrence terrorist attacks on buildings and businesses planned to be destroyed a mere 90 days before the attack. The KPMG tax shelters and subsequent funding began at the same time as the UN oil for food scam. 
It reached its final countdown 100 days prior to 9-11 when the perpetrators laid down a zigzag trail of evidence to lead the public attention away from the newly created United Nations UN MOVIC weapons inspectors. These UN infiltrators were funded by Saddam Hussein for the sole purpose of intelligence collection of the NORAD Blue Team Defenders response tactics during an earlier terrorist attack scenario war game rehearsed in June, Amalgam Virgo. By observing the Blue Team NORAD response of the Al-Qaeda terrorists Red Team attackers during Amalgam Virgo, a way was revealed how to inject two apparently independent assassination teams. One to attack targets and videotape the attacks as instruments of value to be used later, while a second spoilation team introduced pre-rehearsed injected false signatures at crash sites and in client companies of KPMG, like the BBC. This was to zigzag public perception of those at fault by keeping public attention on the destruction of America's strategic command and financial centers in New York, Washington, D.C., and a killing field in Pennsylvania. This action diverted the attention of the public and media scrutiny from Chicago in order to co-opt, keep open, and perform insider trading on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange during and directly after the September war game Global Guardian. These teams performed a series of murder-for-hire contract hits on some of their own overinsured companies and buildings as ideal financial targets to capture large portions of the global commons into foreign private equity funds out of U.S. oversight. In particular, client corporations managing $70 trillion of sovereign debt, reinsurance, and carbon credit, Aon Corporation, and Cantor CO2E. The hits were financed by tax shelters to ultimately feed hedge funds with destroyed business equity capture and victim life and property insurance frauds for KPMG, United Nations Environmental Trust Bankers in Zug, Switzerland, times such that insider trading could gain the stock market crash and rise after the attack on New York caused by their assassination teams. The assassination teams also performed a series of murder-for-hire contract hits on military targets of the criminal enterprise that presented an historic opportunity to our enemies as a gross act of treason for a 30-hour period on 9-11. That opportunity ended due to the failed departure of the last flying weapon that was exploded over Pennsylvania. The failure of the fourth weapon to reach its top-off leadership target forced Chinese naval and Russian air forces, possibly anticipating that opportunity, to stand down war games being performed in the Straits of Formosa and the Arctic above Canada during the same 30-hour period on 9-11. The hit teams then performed a final timed and premeditated destruction of their command and control center in World Trade Center 7 at 5.20 p.m., ending the criminal enterprise. This action also destroyed incriminating evidence housed in SEC files investigating the illegal tax shelters that would indict company clients of KPMG, like Enron and Nortel. The spoliation teams then deployed to crash sites to perform false evidence injection in the form of planted terrorist passports, as well as personal effects such as red team headbands of terrorist pilots. This was designed to zigzag public perception away from the guilty toward a sole perpetrator, Al-Qaeda playing a part in an ideological attack instead of a criminal one. The spin teams injected broadcast virtual news events and evidence of blame predetermined in the timetable of the criminal activity by agents connected electronically to television broadcast company clients of KPMG, the BBC and NBC Universal. This was designed to zigzag attention away from the guilty as they vacated World Trade Center 7's virtual war rooms and closed down their connection to the embedded virtual private networks. But one BBC feed was broadcast 20 minutes early, with the World Trade Center 7 still in the skyline in the background while the reporter on the scene reported its collapse.